The Survivor Specialist Film Will are back with our episode eight predictions for Survivor 46. And for the first time, we are joined by potentially a Survivor Specialist super fan. We're going to have to dive deep into this. J.D. Robinson uh, from Survivor 41. He's here in the flesh. He's been he's been all over our chat the last couple of months. Uh, what we're doing on. Big yeah. time. We're doing our second chances. He was the one in there giving us the advice on who we should actually be putting on there. He even we even said, included give him. People, give people spots over me. So he's yeah. like, J.D. Yeah. was very, he's like, I don't need the spot. This this person deserves, deserves it over me. This person deserves it. And uh, J.D. made the ballot. Didn't make it onto the cast. I was close. I was close. You were. But not yeah. You were. Well, close. I think you were seventh out of the voting, but I will yeah. say the new era top five were it was yeah, a gap were. between five and six. But and, and no Carson, no Carson, so. and there was no Carson. I know. Which now there's been some drama, so we don't know. If, I don't know. We'll have to <laughs> yeah. see. But anyway, yeah. so JD, you're finally here. We're yeah. stoked to have you. You I'm have to tell here. you have to tell everybody what you told us beforehand, though, because not only are you humble, but you also have good taste in podcasts. So how long have you listened very, to us? You said time. I've been listening to you guys since I was like. Mm, a sophomore in high school so probably man how long ago was that that was a long time ago so <laughs> almost like six seven years maybe i i can't even yeah. i can't count i'm not good at math um you know what I season remember, you started with yeah so i started with david and goliath okay um i don't know why like i had I don't want to. I don't want to say too much, but I did watch Peridium before you guys. Like I watched Peridium. He was my first Survivor YouTuber, and I was just like, "What else is out there?" And then I, I I came across like you guys doing predictions and power rankings, and I came across like uh, you and Alexa had mm -hmm. um, Davey for the tell alls and Alec and Kara, and it was just like it was so amazing. And Will, I wasn't. I I didn't watch you initially. But hey, I it's went all back good. I went back and I watched all of like the tell alls, like all of like your first Adam Klein one, and like so I, I'm a oh fan way of, back in the I'm day. A, I'm, okay. a, I'm a fan, okay. Role, okay? Um, yeah, but yeah, I've been watching you guys forever, even when I was in Survivor casting, and right before COVID hit, when I went to uh, Burbank and we did, and I met Jeff and I met everybody. I was in my hotel room watching Tommy Sheehan's tell all. Like I'm, I'm so like I've all I love you guys. You guys are. Don't tell Rob, but you guys are the best Survivor podcast. Don't tell Jeff, but y'all are the best Survivor podcast. So, oh, no. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm excited. My first prediction in power rankings. So. Wait, we got Noah Vandenberg over here who says, listening longer than JD, put it into perspective. So there you go. I mean, I love that, though. I mean, yeah. that's that was the fun. And, I mean, obviously our tell-alls have died down a little bit. Although season 41, we were able to do quite a few. Um, yeah. We had Xander. We had Xander. Tiff. We had yep. Evie. Actually, I don't think we did one with Tiff. We definitely had Danny. We had Evie. So we mm – -hmm. We did quite a few for your season, and then it died off um, pretty hard in season 42 because there was a little bit of behind-the-scenes drama um, yeah. <laughs> between some players, which enough yeah. people know about. They can go find it. But that kind of that kind of made it die off a little. But it was funny because when I had Jake O'Kane on here a couple weeks ago, he was saying the same thing. He's like, before I got on there, I went and ate up those tell-alls. And I feel like if you're, if you're in the casting process, if you do that, those tell-alls seem to help you all. Seriously, and not just ours, but go listen to Rob's when he was doing yeah. all the really long deep dives. Those things can help you because you're going to get some some insider knowledge that you might not even be thinking about. Yeah, I, I absolutely did. Like, I love watching Tommy's, especially. You know, what? If, if you haven't watched any tell-alls, the best ones to watch, in my opinion, Tommy's, uh, Davey Rickenbacker's, uh, Lauren O'Connell's, don't watch War Dogs unless you got hours and hours and hours of time. <laughs> we had to split um, that one in half for the. There were multiple for, episodes. Yeah, of that one. we had but to do like, it in half. They're really good. So, and you can like so that you even have a ranking. Information. Like, and then, and then you gotta so definitely good. check out the Adam Klein one. Still, the first yeah. one ever. You gotta go back to the OG one, like you did, JD. So. And and I will say, Adams, <laughs> every single time you guys have had Adam on, he's been like. He's so insightful. Like, even though his power rankings are always absolutely wrong, like yeah. he always has something that's so like valuable to say. And like, 
stuff that you haven't thought about about the game. So I just think that's cool. He had Randon as a hot take potential winner for the season. And he I, said that I, the day before or three days before Randon was met back <laughs> from the game. So. Yeah, and I was the highest on Randon. I had him the highest up in my rankings, and I felt good. I'm like, he's in a great spot here. And then I, uh, you know, I had to take that, take that L uh, as he, as he got meta back the very next episode. Yeah. Well, my winner, my winner pick was Mariah. So not Mariah, Mo. Mo. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so. Mariah, Maria, just throwing them on the same tribe was, was chaos, but I don't get it, but you the know, con- the confusion's gone now. I mean, just tell everybody your actual winner pick was Maria. You just got the names confused. Cause that's, that's, that's who I'm kind of yeah. leaning towards at this point, but yeah, what I are mean, you, she's, Go ahead. she's pretty high on my, on my list. Not spoil anything yet. I'm, I'm excited to dive into that. What are you thinking about the season so far? Especially it's nice that we're getting, we've had a lot of 45, We've had a lot of 40, 40 uh, in the past. We've had a lot of 43. So it's good to hear from somebody from the OG new era season. Right, right. Come the on here. Everyone hearing. hates. Now, what do you think? Well, yeah, I've, t- I've been very vocal about it. Yeah, I know you hate it. Hey, I don't hate it as much as Phil. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm like not a complete defender of 41. Right. But um, I was doing my new era rewatch on our uh, Patreon and like watching all the new era seasons like back to back to back. I think like 41 definitely holds up when you're comparing it. I think it was just so new and it was just like this visceral change that p- people just felt like a certain way about it. And the hourglass obviously did not help, but I mean, I think season one or season 41 holds up. I said season I, one because drop so. the four, keep the one, keep the one, you know? And I think I JD, think underrated. I think you're, underrated. you're a character for me, at least like when I think of new era survivor, I don't know why it always comes to my head. Like you on the journey when they're doing, like the slow mo walk up shots, you're walking up yeah. the mountain and you're having the flashbacks and you're speaking over. It. That's mm-hmm. such a motif of what like New Era Survivor is. Right. And I think you were like one of the very early characters to get kind of like this big backstory, these like big right. slow mo shots um, on like a journey, which is now these are like staples of what we're watching. So, like, I that yeah. still like sticks in my mind. So, I mean, I think you are definitely a yeah. symbol. Of new era survivor I'm and i have was to... oh i'm sorry go ahead i have to jump in here as will is praising you because i need to say why i think he's praising you even more in your pregame when you wrote out your your answers here for which past pl- survivor will you play the game most like you said you wanted to be a combination of parvati jeremy collins and fabio and that is Will's guy. So I just had to throw uh, that in here before you answer. I think anyone who can appreciate Fabio has a, a good under- fundamental right understanding of what Survivor is actually about. And the things that we talk about in this podcast aren't so much really about like how you actually can go play and win the game. Like we talk mm-hmm. like talking about the votes and idols and advantages and format stuff and, and the characters themselves. But at the end of the day, being a likable person who can get to the end and have people right. vote for you to win a million dollars. That is like the core, the essence of survivor. And that doesn't come across our screen sometimes like so clearly And Fabio, I, agree, I think yeah. is a great example for you to write him down and say like the way he won that there is like, that's a viable way to play the game. And clearly it won him the game and you can, yeah. not, and you didn't say just Fabio, you wanted to combine some other players games too. Right. But right, I right, do right. think that is a, you know, it shows a, a good understanding of the game. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, that was that was nineteen year old JD, who is very different than freaking twenty three year old JD now. Like, I I feel like it was a bit naive. A lot of the stuff that I I did out there was just, I mean, I didn't have enough life experience. And I remember talking to Jeff, and he was like, JD, you're not gonna win. Like, I remember him telling me, he was like, JD, you're not gonna win. He's like, I love you, but we're, you're not going to win. And I remember being like, no, Jeff, I'm going to win. Like, I'm going to show you. And 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 now I, I, I understand. It was just the lack of life experience, mm-hmm. to be honest. And, like, we had Xander and Liana out there, and they were, like, a couple months older than me. But they still, like, went out there and did their thing. And they had that life experience that I just didn't, I guess, you know? Like, they just had... I feel like they might have been a little more, a little bit more mature than I was at that time. Um, they but, also uh, were on tribes that a tribe that wasn't losing every, every right. time. Jay. I mean, that right. that also helped a little bit, I think, in your case, because you and, you all just kept losing. I mean, I know yeah. that Sarah is technically the wait, Sarah, right? No, it's Sarah. Uh, yeah, Sarah, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah is technically the first boot from the season, but 
Well, you were Abraham. on the tribe that just kept kind of. Oh, that's right. It was Abraham. Abraham. That's man. right. That's how much I've rewatched Forty One. Um, I can tell. But, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like, when you're on that Ua tribe where it just kind of keeps the wheels keep falling off. I mean, you do get players who have a really good understanding of the game, even if they're a little bit life experience. You know, might not be there. I mean, Q was probably one tribal counts one one lost immunity challenge from being another pre merge boot. So I you just never know. I disagree really? too. I, I disagree I think, also. I think it was going to be Kenzie for sure. Yep. Wow. I'm with you, I JD. I, 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 and I heard y'all talk about this with Sabaya and Will. You were the only one who was saying, no, she was closer with Kenzie. Now, well, you were saying she was closer with Q, which I agree with. Now, she's definitely closer with Kenzie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was. I would say she was closer with Yeah, Q. I think pre merge, it was like she, she vibed with Q a little bit better and probably sees Kenzie as a kind of social threat that, like, if I had to pick one of these people to go pre-merge it would be kenzie right, but sure. now that we now we're at final 10 and now you know q is trying to basically run things um and from last episode it's definitely yeah. clear that tip and kenzie uh, are the dude that has shifted jd though that doesn't mean we were wrong in our opinions pre-merge no, I mean, these I, things change so yeah I, i'm not saying that's still the case i absolutely agree that it is currently tip and kenzie as the two out of that three We'll see. We'll see if we stay on the same page with these rankings. We'll see. This mm -hmm. is a tough week, actually. I, like the, I was thinking the same exact thing. I mm -hmm. was like, it's I, not I, easy. I, I kid you not. I have like eight different lists <laughs> right here because I I don't know. Last and I it seemed easier a lot. Easier. It, it was, was like, especially once Tim we Soda got Irving, the like, yeah. It yeah. was it was once we got the tribe kind of breakdowns or the team breakdowns. Um, it was like okay, it's down to these two or these right. two, and it yeah. played out exactly that in the episode as we as we talked about on our recap. Here, I don't think there is. I think we could probably pick the bottom three or four potentially, and, and I, I imagine we'll be somewhat agreeable on that. But yeah, putting those bottom three or four people in yeah. order, I mean, good luck. I struggled struggled mightily, and uh, yeah, we'll see. This we'll see. is, and I. I think this is a, a a side effect of having now three tribal councils that weren't normal air quote tribal councils because you right. have to try be safe at one. Then you have the split tribal. The split, so now we yeah. have we've had a lot of people go home in three days. We have three people go home in three days and we haven't actually got to see how people are going to react when they're in the situation of everybody playing together, of everybody right. being eligible to Everyone's go home. Everyone's right. vulnerable except for one person. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it'll be fun. I'm excited. It's going to be hard. I only have one person who I'm like, I really don't think they're going home. And then the other nine, I'm just like, we'll see what happens. And I do want to throw this question up because Andy, Andy might be onto something. Who's to say this week is going to be normal either. JD, have True. we heard anything about this week? Not just being a normal vote. Have you heard anything in the, in the rumor mill? Um, only, I mean, I do read the survivor Reddit every now and then. And people are saying that Hunter is hiding in a tree and it's, it's like a game where it's if you hide long enough, it's safety without power and he doesn't have to go to tribal. So that's funny. That. But I think, I mean, Jeff said it was going to be a crazy one. So, yeah, I think I don't know. Normal, I think they're doing a normal no tribal idea. council Fingers here. Crossed. And if, if they weren't doing a normal tribal council, I feel like it would be tease and it would be this big thing that Jeff would be discussing and talking about. And that the fact they, keep going back to the same format beats over this new era and they really don't break away from this format all that much and that feel like you just said we had you know the mergatory weird thing where only you know six people and then right. are even out eligible and then we split that it would be to me very surprising if we're gonna do another like wonky format breaking vote yeah, we have 10 much. people. Let's let's get to our first real mm -hmm. merge vote and here. Honestly, honestly, I I actually am a defender of mergatory and mm -hmm. the split tribal. I know that's crazy, but I I think in Jeff's mind and like the producer's mind, the alternative would be to have to stay in the the tribe phase, right? Mm -hmm. For the next two votes. And a lot of times in previous seasons, those last two tribe votes can be either boring or they get rid of players who, you know, had a lot of potential. Our goal. Who Jeff liked. <laughs> yeah. Or, right, I'm I pointing mean, at you. <laughs> I mean, not, not me. I, I, it, I don't know. But um, definitely, like, I, I think back to, like, Boston Rob and Winners at War mm -hmm. and, like, Jack Nick Ting and, and um, Island of the Idols. 
you go back even further. I mean, go to heroes versus villains. They kept right. the tribes together for so much longer. Coach and, and Courtney. That's, yeah, that's ultimately yeah. how the heroes were able to even it up was because right. they, even though coach and Courtney both made the jury, neither one of them actually made the merge, which is so right. weird to think about in the new yeah. era now, because now you make the merge and you don't even make the jury. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's kind of fascinating. Too. That yeah. freaking sucks. That's brutal. That's the worst. That's pain. Um, but yeah, I really think that that Jeff and and production they they just do that split tribal just just for, so to make it more interesting, basically. I think. And you're okay with it at final twelve though, when they're claiming it's a merge and then they immediately go to the split tribal? Not necessarily. I mean, I, I there's better wording for sure that they could use, but I I mean I get the I get it right. Mm -hmm. I I get why they're doing it. Um. I just wish they would make every single season like the best season of Survivor, which is Millennials versus Gen X. There you go. That's right. There you go. There you go. So, so you did uh, listen to us back during 33. Uh, yeah, you must have, because that's what Will was saying afterwards. I think it on is the, the best Adam season. podcast, he said it. It's the best season, man. Yeah, and, and we've talked about this a little bit more on Patreon. I, I think my stance on it now is, is it the best season ever of Survivor? Probably not, but I look at seasons. What seasons did I have the most fun watching? Right. And to me, that one stands out and probably still, I don't think I've had more fun watching a season live than right. Millennials vs. Gen X. So, and then Korong was another good mm -hmm. one. Now, Co I don't, I don't have Korong that high. Really? really? I, Korong's I, top 10, but not, not top five. Top 10 gotcha. sure, though. Yeah. I, Number two, I think, second chance. Second really? Chance, See that? Yeah. I think that's super high. I have second chance as like one of the more overrated seasons. So you think 41's underrated. I think second chance is over. Uh, overrated. So here we go. Yeah. Forty-one is underrated, but forty-one is not top twenty. It's not top twenty. Wow. Okay. So you don't even put your own season top twenty. We might have to do a JD uh, season rankings at some point. Well, where he just Ooh. comes on, and and I I I would be in for this. I'd be in for a little JD well, giving the hot this. takes. I, I can put the logos in order. For that, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can put there the logos go. in order. There you so. go. We we never doubted your fandom, JD. That's one thing Thank we definitely guys. didn't do here. Um. <laughs> So, okay, the question I asked 11 minutes ago before we really, like, went on this very fun talk yeah. was – Sorry, I like think guys. No, I love it. I'm I'm into it. I just – I'm glad I remembered what the question I got. What was, was it? I'm like, don't even know what the yeah, question I don't was. Remember. I, I have no idea where we how are you? <laughs> how are you feeling about season 46? Are you liking it? Are you feeling like uh, – uh, what do you think? Let's hear I, it. I love it. I – I I think this is such a great season. Season, um, I loved the pre-merge. I know a lot of people didn't like Bonu, but I even said to Rob, I was like, I was like, I really liked Bonu. I think it was a, a, a there might have been a little too much Bonu, a little too much, but I thought that Bonu brought so much depth to the season, and I think he brought something that we don't usually see. We got to see his full survivor basically like journey in in that four day span we got to see ev i felt like we saw everything from bonnie mm -hmm. that we possibly could and i think for a lot of pre-mergers all of us there was so much brad that people didn't see um you know there's i'm sure there was so much like jenny from 42 and i'm sure there was so much neca and like all of the pre-mergers, we don't usually get a lot of content. I was one of the lucky few who had 14 confessionals in episode one. Mm -hmm. I was, I, but like you don't get to see a lot of the pre-mergers, and we got to see all of Bonu, and so I liked it. Perfect. So I just I got to throw this out there for you, JD. Will loves when I bring up confessional counts. He loves it; yeah. it's his favorite thing. So here's one for you. Supposedly, according to um, Reddit, you had 22 confessionals in your season, and going into the finale, Erica had 26. So yeah. JD definitely got his screen time. He found his way in for sure. <laughs> and I, what, what like really perplexes me is I was like, either they're like teeing me up for a possible return or they're like, JD was so sweet. Let's give him some confessionals and then never like speak to him ever again. So <laughs> it's scary to think about, but I just got to keep hoping and fingers crossed, but it's not, it's not super likely, but I'm, I'm holding out. Hey, Kelly Wentworth, there's a, Kelly there's, Wentworth yeah. went out fifth. There's Kelly a second Wentworth chance, also. and I, so. you were definitely a bigger character than Kelly Wentworth was on her original season. So, yeah. um, yeah, I think it's definitely possible. When you were watching season 41, now that we're talking about con confessionals, yeah. um, did also, I mean, did you know Erica was gonna win? Did you hear from your fellow cast members? I know you right. weren't on the yeah. jury, did you yeah. know that though? I, I knew, I knew everything that you happened. knew. Okay, so you knew everything yeah. that happened. Were you mm -hmm. surprised while watching? 
uh, that Erica was so under the radar and that we didn't see that much of her, especially early on in the game? Were you watching me like, wait, did I get told the right did Erica? Did she right. I didn't, I didn't, like, that's exactly how I felt. was like, oh, maybe somebody told me something false. Um, I mean, as you already know, as I stated in, in one of you guys' videos, 41, they all hate each other. And so when people finally got back and everybody was talking and communicating, I got the sense that people didn't love her. And I got the sense that people also didn't love Deshaun or Xander. Mm -hmm. um, what I can say is that in pregame Ponderosa, not pregame, in uh, pre-merge Ponderosa with Brad and Sarah and Abraham and Jeannie and Sydney, we were all thinking – Xander is like the biggest threat in this whole game. Like, because he, from my perspective and from Ua's perspective, he was kind of carrying Yasa. Mm -hmm. So we were like, yeah, Xander's got to go for sure. And we knew he had the idol because Brad got voted out and Brad knew the phrases. And Brad was like, no, I had the idol and Xander had yeah. the idol. <laughs> and I was like, what? And so we were like, if Xander gets to the end, he wins. And, and so he did so many other things, it felt like. In the post-merge, yeah. it's not someone yeah. who is, like, carrying their tribe and being dominant and finding idols. It was, you know, he had the biggest moment, I think, of that season with Knowledge's power at that mergatory boot, which was a huge, huge moment. And then he had this idol and had the balls to, like, not play it yeah. episode after episode. Um, and, and for him to go in there and be the zero vote. He was the zero vote finals. I think. He right. was the zero vote finals, yeah. yep. Right. Uh, it, was, it was definitely – surprising and i think that kind of goes back to our conversation that we we just had a little bit ago about fabio and that it, it, you just gotta get enough people on your side that want you to win and i think right. that's probably where xander fell short is that yeah. i don't think there was really that many people on the jury that felt like hey this is xander's game mm -hmm. to win and i know he was playing from the bottom a lot yeah, of the merch was. but he had so many game moves the things that we talk about like falling back on just his gameplay, I thought would have helped him get a couple of votes, but it really, he yeah. just, there was just something about, and maybe it is because he was so young and mm -hmm. didn't have that life experience that, that we've also talked about. So I'm not sure, I, but definitely, yeah, definitely I interesting a, hearing your thoughts on, on I have a 41. ranking of like who, who I think would beat who. And like, mm -hmm. there are just some people who, if they get to the end, I think they beat everybody. I think like Shan JD beats, probably. I think, no, I'm JD not beats everybody <laughs> at the end. I think, I think Shan beats everybody. To be honest, I think Brad beats everybody but shan you know i think ricard is high up there as well um and when i say everybody hates each other that's kind of true but like i want people to know like our cast there's a lot of really really kind people nasir evie tiffany is so kind deshaun is so kind like there there's so many people on the cast who are really nice i just think they yeah. Oh, we just don't gel. <laughs> I have to. I have to ask you a question. And may, I, he posted. Deshaun barely posts on social media, right? Like he's he's right. pretty off the radar. Yeah. Was he doing a masters or something at Barry University? Do you know this? I think so. I'm. I'm not. A, was I'm not I? Sure. I do a lot of work down at that school. So when I saw Deshaun pop up, I was like, "What in the world?" I had no idea. I probably like walked by Deshaun. If he's on that campus, I mean, I'm on that campus all the time. So I was just wondering. I couldn't say everybody's a ghost on social media except yeah, like your whole Xander. cast. Z except for like Xander and Ricard. Well, Xander gets the as as Johnny Fairplay puts him the thirst pictures or whatever. He gets yeah, he's, those for Johnny Fairplay. Bro, he, bro he, sexy, yeah. like come yeah. on, like if I that's what like Fairplay that, I wants, you know. That's it. <laughs> yeah, clearly he wants sexy survivors mm -hmm. and and big characters. Even though some of the characters on here, he didn't think were big enough, but I think he, they were. I mean, yeah, we'll get, we'll get into that. We'll get yeah. JD in here for some positivity, I'm a ready. little different spin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There was definitely oh so here's a question I want to ask you about 41 and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to you know JD I love you but I got and Danny you know we had on this podcast a couple yeah. times so I, I right. love I love some people on your cast here but I got to go back mm -hmm. to pretending it doesn't exist I have to put that back in there that's okay like that so you've almost convinced me to move ahead of one world though because you have talked somewhat positively so it might you jump have us behind one, one world I, I have I, you as I, there's no the way bottom, JD there's at the no bottom way at the Phil. bottom I'm because you, least, I want. I watched 41 and 42 back to back. And I think if and a lot of people like 42 yeah, and like hate 41. It. And I'm like, yeah. they are to me like very yes, they are so so similar. And that people have like I've seen people's rankings and 42 is like 20 seasons higher at 41. It's like what yeah, I don't get it. Show are you watching? Like these seasons 
I, I think maybe it was just more palatable watching 42 now that you've seen like what the new era That's is. That's exactly what it was. But Erica, if you watch Erica those seasons, oh, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure she is. I'm, I mean, because she, she like, I didn't any, see it. any like, of these social players, it's harder to tell their stories. And it's the stories that Survivor chooses not to focus on because it's not the best television product uh the but games that's, that's, that some of these people play that's and that's so okay weird. that's so weird though because like i know i said all that stuff about xander but like we also all the pre-mergers we were looking at erica too because guys go back and watch 41 erica did not lose a puzzle not one. yeah yeah we had if you re-watch episode one ua has the most like this show doesn't even do it justice in the first challenge Ua has the biggest lead that you will like. Like, I was like, there's no way we lose. But Shan forgot the puzzle piece in the bag. And so mm-hmm. Sarah and Shan couldn't get the puzzle done. Erica did that puzzle so wicked fast. She did the turtle puzzle in the next episode wicked fast. Um, the next one was like sandbags and like they had skill challenges, but she won every single puzzle. Mm-hmm. She well, was always a threat. Yeah. And and it. Will, you brought up the point earlier. And then I'm I'm gonna ask this question. It's coming, but I gotta say this first. So Will brought up the point earlier of with Mona's versus Gen X, he might not consider it the best, but it was the most fun he had watching. The the thing that 41 has working against it is there was so much excitement that Survivor was back. Yeah. And then almost every single twist in the game was disagreed with by me and by most of the community. That it was for disagreed me, with by the players as well. By the players, I know. And so for me, it was like 40 watching 41. I did not enjoy it from a survivor perspective because mm-hmm. of that. And I think that's why I always use the hyperbole of it's the worst season, but I also haven't rewatched. I tried to rewatch Nicaragua four different times and have not been able to get through it once. Nicaragua. Time. It's not that bad either. I hate it with a passion. So anyway, I don't think Nicaragua is that we, bad. But... Well, like I said, we're going to have the JD season rankings. At some I think point. JD and, and I think Will we are, uh, I think we are on the same page. In terms you guys, of, yeah. yeah, that's, that's the next podcast. And I usually, my... I usually disagree with Phil's takes when I, when I hear them, I love you, Phil. And I think you're brilliant. But I disagree with like a lot of. I've been watching you and Blake talk, and I I just disagree with some of the stuff. So. Mm-hmm. I like that uh, though. I uh, want people to be. I want it to be that you don't agree with everything I say. If you're agreeing with everything I say, then I'm just I'm just reading off Twitter. Not you. I'm just saying in general, people no, are yeah, listening. Yeah, I'm I, just reading off like what was what got the most retweets today. Okay, that's my take now. Like I try not to do that. I really try to just give my my personal authentic take. But yeah, I gotta and ask you're, this. You're, I love that you are. You know. Uh, in using the art of plagiarism yeah. uh, and that you have your own takes, but that often makes you totally, totally wrong and inaccurate. But I, Which do, is good. Res- I do respect that you, yeah. uh, but it gets people listening from, from 14 you had- or 15 till they're 23. So yeah. it works. <laughs> you, you had D winning and you know what? You had Lauren O'Connell winning in y'all's, uh, second chance thing. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah, you're did. right. Sometimes you're I right. did pick that. I love that he you did have Mich- out. He did I have Michelle winner. winner. Also, but, but Will, do you realize JD just just like uh, gave me props for knowing that the winner of our Brant steal, I got that right. That's what he yeah. was giving me. No, no, he's yeah. like he's, you did. That's what that's what JD. He's like, yeah, Phil, you do get some things right. Like, yeah, you predicted the winner of the Brant steal game. Like, like the made up. Like, stuff. He, he's grasping at straws to compliment to you right now. He's like, <laughs> well, I gotta think of something he got right, and it was in the made up Survivor world because there's not enough right in the real Survivor world that you're correct about. So, so let's let me ask this question, and then we'll actually talk about forty. 46, because I'm sure some of the 46 yeah. players are listening now, and they're like, oh, my God, what about my season? <laughs> so yeah. if one person, if you could pick one person from your season to play a second time, who do you think Brad would Reese. have the most to offer? Brad Reese. Really? Like that quick? You didn't even let me finish the question. You knew Brad. exactly where you were going. Uh, like in my I mean, opinion, like the, the people who deserve a second chance the most, in, in my opinion, um, and this is from – like the fan perspective that I would like to see. I know people hate Shan. You, you have to, you have to have Shan. Like Mm -hmm. she, in my opinion, is is the best of the new era, not the best player, but she's like in terms of playing ability, strategic, social, um, and in terms of character, she's really, really strong. Second to none. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Brad Reese is, the most fun character of the new era, in my opinion. He's top 10 characters all time, in my opinion. Wow. Um, and he's an underrated player. Let me put this into perspective real quick, just to, so you guys can think about this. I'll make it really quick. 
Brad is in what 50 year old conservative country farmer rancher from Wyoming and his two closest the two people who trusted him the most was the lesbian store clerk <laughs> and the little 19 year old black kid mm-hmm. from California mm-hmm. if that's not social game I don't know what it is like Brad that. had the social game and I wish they would have shown this on the show but before Sarah goes home and we're sitting on the beach Sarah's like I'm talking to Sarah and she's like, don't vote me. Like there's two people running this game. And and I was like, yeah, there's two people running this tribe. And we were both like, it's Brad and Chan. Cause wow. Brad had one half. Brad had me and Jeannie and himself and Chan had Ricard and Sarah. And so like, I really think Brad is underrated. Brad was also a beast in challenges. Um, if my own hubris didn't get in the way and I didn't want to do all the challenges, we probably wouldn't have lost some of those. Mm-hmm. Well, let me say, we wouldn't have lost the sandbag challenge. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, but um, is that what money? That's money, right? No, money is the ring toss. Which oh, that was good. ring toss. I that was good. good in that challenge. Yeah. I landed two out of the three rings, and everybody acts like I was just such a bum in that challenge. But they got it right there. <laughs> <laughs> money. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will, are... I will say, I will also say that real quick, one more thing is that. Survivor messed up uh, for 41 because they could have made the cast a lot more fun and just changing the tribes. They should have made Survivor 41, Survivor XYZ. Like literally, Mm -hmm. like kind of a double entendre. XYZ because we've had so many Survivor seasons. And then XYZ because we should have split the tribes in Gen X, Gen Y, and Gen Z. It, It was perfect. That's a solid theme, and they love me, three tribe formats. I mean, right, that is right. a very strong, me, very Xander, good strong sequel to uh, 33. That could be right. good. Me, Xander, Deshaun, Liana, Sarah, Wilson, Sydney. That's all Gen Z. That's it's great. All tribe. of us are Gen Z. Then you have Ricard, Shan, um, Evie, Danny, Evie, uh, who am I Erica, missing? Erica, and David Voce. Mm-hmm. And then you have the old people, which Brad would have won this season. I'm telling you guys, that's crazy. He, Brad, would, Brad was running, basically running our tribe until he th- targeted me, who was loyal to him. Um, you have Brad, Abraham, Nasir. Honestly, that tribe's not losing. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, and then you have Heather, um, Tiffany, and then I'm missing somebody. Gene. Genie. It was right I like here. that. That's a good and split. It, it I mean, you just so did good. you did the split with three and three and the ages. Yeah, it would have been so good. I mean, me and Xander talked about this too. Like after the show, we were like, "That's what we thought when we were meeting everybody, and it was like all pre pre game." We were like, "This is clearly a battle of generations, right?" Mm-hmm. So, anyways, I'm ready when you are. I'm sorry. I love it. All right. Well, <laughs> now that we're into this, you've heard. We've pretty much gotten the JD. We've gotten the the abbreviated tell all that we've all right. been dying for since season yeah. forty one. We've got. We, but if you if you are looking for the rest of the JD tell all, just go look at the comments throughout like the second chances. He was all <laughs> yeah. over it. Yeah. Um, but okay, if you're still here, like the video, subscribe to the channel, do all of that fun stuff. It helps us out. It helps us. It goes a long way. We're getting into the rankings now. There's ten people remaining. We are done with. We don't have the tr- uh, the split anymore. We are finally going to have a bunch of people available to be this voted out. We so know hard. that there's going to be lost votes. A normal votes. survivor vote. Yeah, there's I mean, going to be people without votes. As normal as it can be. Maybe, yeah. but we'll see. JD, who are you putting at the top of your list this week? This was this was so hard. And I do – whenever I watch you guys do predictions and power rankings, I write my own. Um, and this one has been the hardest one, to be honest, for me. Um, I have two people who I really don't think are going home. But at one, I'm going to put Hunter. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put Hunter. He has the idol. Um, nobody really seems like they want to target. Uh-oh. He just Uh-oh. totally dropped off. Uh-oh. All right, so we got to the power ranking part, and JD said, screw you yeah, all. Yeah, he's like, he's like, these rankings, this is the most difficult week, and of course, this is the week that I've been scheduled to come on, and uh, we're going to kick it off. And you know what? I'm over this. This is too difficult. <laughs> so he's gone. All right, I'm just I just shot him a quick text. Oh, he's back. He's already back. Let's see. You don't, good? Don't, don't ask me what happened. Don't don't oh, I, we I, were, I, have, I have no idea. We 
he finally we were saying that like all you actually wanted to do is talk about survivor 41 and convince me it was better than how i think of it so you said we're done with that Screw yeah that. We, we started talking about season 46 and you're like uh 46, waste of I'm time. Time. 46. <laughs> yeah. okay hunter nobody mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like people really want to target hunter i know tiff had that confessional last week where she's like uh i could get rid of hunter at any time i want but i really don't see her going after hunter yet i mean he's in this he's in the six which is now not even six but he's in that q does not want to get rid of him because q has deluded himself and believes that he can beat hunter anytime he wants i'm not sure if that's true we'll find out um but yeah also i don't know if you guys watched the secret scenes but q's in the secret scene he was like did watch that one he's basically like hunter's dumb Mm mm-hmm Hunter's doing such a good job mm-hmm. of managing his threat level in terms of like how smart he is. Cause he's arguably the most brilliant person on the cast. Right. Mm-hmm. But why is he not? It's so much easier to hide your physical strength than it is to hide your, your like strategic strength. Yeah. Like why is bro trying so hard at the challenges pre-merge? I don't know can't can't go home if you don't go to tribal that's it and i i think for i think what's interesting with hunter right now is he just survived the part of the game that generally people like him go home like the split tribal the numbers were not in his favor you had a three two one split (laughs) he was solo from nami huge physical threat not only does he survive that he doesn't have to play as idol Mm. and so you sit here and you say okay now he's a final 10 with an idol yeah he's watched enough survive. he might not be able to put the logos in order but he's watched enough Survivor to have seen. Well, not, you yeah. don't say Mike there, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly. No, we know he can't do that. He yeah. can't do it. He, Kelly, he's seen James. He knows that people have gone home with two idols in their pocket in a situation where, look, Hunter, you could win every single immunity right. challenge. You right. won't, but you could. So the first one where you're not safe, I'm probably playing that thing because mm. that's just what I want. But I he's do got a think- great read. I think Q is actually the biggest Hunter advocate on the island. I agree. Because he doesn't oh. want – he wants Hunter to be the meat shield, and it's helping Hunter a lot because Q is not just putting a target on himself now as a physical player, but he's also being shown as more strategic. So by trying to use Hunter as a meat shield and being so desperate about it, it's actually biting him in the ass and helping <laughs> Hunter. Yeah, it absolutely is. So kudos yeah. to Hunter for – for playing in, the game that he's playing it's great in that q secret scene that you mentioned yeah. to me it was really telling of like who's actually playing a stronger game not really it wasn't as much about q as it was the people he was talking about right because there's some people he completely nailed accurately yeah, i agree. And like, i thought for him there were three significant misses and that was hunter one, charlie charlie and maria those yeah. three completely Final misread three. what they're doing and then those uh-huh. three we all have is like some of the, the three best players on this season. I and agree. it goes to show you really kind of focuses in on such a skill of Survivor yeah. is controlling how other people perceive you. And clearly Hunter has done an amazing right. job of that. A yeah. name that he didn't totally get wrong just because he's been on the tribe with this person since day one is tiffany i got tiffany back at number one um every week now i've had tiffany at number one i know she she has the (laughs) idol and there's no reason i mean even even here i think tiffany is in a better spot than hunter there might be some eyeballs that are going to look at this yanni three and say hey how are they still here they got split up into two groups at the murgatory they were all together we split up Mm. again they're all together so they've been safe and we are just coming off of season 44, uh, yeah. the, the people who went out there. Obviously, we've seen season 45. They have not. The last season they saw was literally the Tika 3 bouncing back and forth. I don't know how much. Did they see the whole season? Or did they see only I think so. A part I think of it? they saw all of it. Because, because um, yeah, they're, Kevin, the, they're the Kevin second season of form. Yeah, he was like, talk, 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 talk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I so, think they've seen the whole thing. Yeah, because they, they they go out there later. So, yeah, they had to have seen the whole thing. And we lost he's gone again. again. But he's going to figure it out. Yeah, it's because he's continue. doing it on his phone, so he's good. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, that there has to be a point, um, and I do think it is this episode, where the other players, the Nani and Siga players that are remaining, are going to look at the Yanu 3 and say, this is the Tika 3 all over again. we got to get these people yep. out. And if you're going to target the Yanu 3, 
few huge physical threat, huge strategic force this season. I mean, he is leading the plus one alliance. He is dictating votes. He's, you know, integrated himself very well with the, you know, Sega and Nami, Nami tries while still having Kenzie and Tip. So he's probably target number one. And then Kenzie is such a social threat and someone you absolutely have to look out for. Jamie's back, everybody. If this happens one more time, I'll cry. No, you it's have, fine. Yeah, are you are you doing it from your phone? I am. Okay. We've been through this a couple times. I remember Cassidy kept freezing up and then going in and out, and it's yeah. frustrating. But just know that when you when you go out, Bill and I we just keep talking, and uh, yeah. y'all are pros. You're, you're totally good. And you're wait like, to hear the no things we're saying wrong. about you when when you drop off, though. It's yeah, crazy. you have to re-listen the podcast. Like, yeah, I definitely will. Yeah. I definitely will. Um, um, but yeah, so Will's, I, I, I'm I, I recapping. Agree. I'll recap it quickly for, for mm. JD. Basically, that if, if people are going to start looking at the Yonder three, be like, hey, we haven't lost one of them yet. The ticket yeah. three we just saw, mm. they're both purple. All this, people are going to look at Q or Kenzie before they look at Tiff as the threat in that three. So, even if she doesn't have an idol, I think she's in a really good spot. And then she also has an idol. So, Tiff, yeah, n- number one. I, um, I Pick. just because I have the same thing as both of you, I'm gonna do Hunter one and then and then Tiff at two. And then I have Hunter at two, so we don't need to. Yeah, that's crazy. I have Tiff at two. So okay. we're all perfect. So me and JD are on the same, but we all have the same stuff too. And these are, I think, what's fascinating is we have seen in this new era where idols don't mean as much necessarily as they used to. We're seeing more people right. get voted out with idols in their pocket. We're seeing more misplays. We're seeing people just not play misreads, whatever you want to call it. I think, though, in this situation, Hunter knows he's the biggest threat and he's going to know when people are lying to him because now he's seen enough people tell him the truth at these last two tribal councils, especially the last one. He could have been the one going home. He knows that those people, he knows what their tells are. If they start to get weird with him, he's just going to play the idol because he knows he's he's a huge physical threat. And then Tiff does have such a finger on the pulse that if she starts to feel like, ooh, this is coming my way, I'm going to play this. But the thing is, they're both also only playing it for themselves, which is not the case with some of these other idols. They'll say, oh, I'll help my alliance. I'll do this. I'll do that. It seems like these three tribes are very happy. You lose one. I lose one. You lose yeah. one. I lose one. <clears throat> there are clear, there's a clear hierarchy in these tribes. Yeah. And so I think that Tiff and Hunter, they'll know if it's going to be them. And if it's anybody else, they're not worried about it. So they're only going to worry about playing it for themselves. I think they're in great spots. I'll put Hunter at one just because I knew Tip was Tip was going to be Will's number one, and that just seems to be what he's doing every single week. So I figured, yeah, yeah. it's Hunter. I, I think you guys have had like Tiff and Hunter top two for the past like two or three weeks. They've just been Tiffany really has well. consistently. It's true. I've had I've had last week I had Tip and Hunter. The week before I had Tip and Hunter. Right before that I had Tip, and then Hunter was at four. So uh, yeah, they they've both yeah. been there for sure. They're doing good. They're doing really good. I don't see either of them winning though. I, I I kind I of agree with you. I think they're too all. threatening to actually get yeah. to the final Tiff, three. I don't think anybody's Tiff's gonna let them amazing. get amazing. Tiff's amazing, but she's Drea. She's Shan. She's she's great, but she's not winning. Like she'll go out like sixth, seventh, or something like we'll, that. We'll we'll get your winner pick later on here. We won't we won't take it quite yet. Yeah. I think Hunter's got a really big uh, uphill battle to get to the final three. I, I think, think he's Tiff, I think he's closer. Do you? Yeah, I think he's got a better shot than Tiff does. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay, so we've done our top two each. I want to bring up this question before we jump into number three. Okay. Did you all read or listen? I think this was actually one that you listened. I don't remember if it was with Bloom or Dalton Ross. Did you all listen to, to Tim's exit press or no? I did. So when he said that he wanted to bring in Maria to hide the fact that Ben was his number one, that wasn't shown on the game, but it was explained in the exit press that Ben was actually who he's tightest with. Mm-hmm. But he didn't want the other players to know this, so he said Maria should have been in the alliance of six and all that. Do you think that's helping Maria and hurting Ben, or do you think that that actually is going to benefit Ben? Because that's where I'm confused now. Of Tim just went home, Maria is still there, so is she more integrated into what could be considered the majority alliance, or does Ben have a bit of a chance because he like because he survived this last one over Tim anyway? I just think it's such a weird, it's such a weird 
moment here. So I'm just wondering what you think. Are you are you thinking in terms of like edit, like they didn't show that? No, so just that in terms of Ben or like no, in terms of like actually people playing the game. Right. Did this yeah. end up hurting Ben that he was not brought in, or does it, or was it kind of like a non-factor and it just helps Maria? I think I think it helps Maria. I think it hurts Ben a little bit, honestly. Mm -hmm. Well, because like the people who are in the six especially Q and like, I think Hunter and even Tevin was bringing it up. Maria was mm -hmm. bringing it up. They take the six seriously. So like, I think it would have helped Ben a lot. Yeah. And I think it really is dependent on who this all happens to. And so Maria being in this position, <laughs> I think she's what we've seen from her. She's a player that look, Tim was her link to the plus one Alliance. She was yeah. the plus one. She wasn't in that original three. And I think some people might look at that and say, okay, Tim is gone. Maria's now got to go back to Sega, back with Charlie, got to figure it out on her own. But I think Maria is such a good player and that she is doing such a good job of keeping all her options open and being willing to work with so many people that I think, and especially now that she just did this vote with Tevin, that she can see, you know what, Tim's gone, but hey, there's still five of us left. left, right. And I'm, I just voted out someone with Tevin. We trust yeah. each other. I'm good with you, Hunter. I'm good with you, Tip. I'm good with you, Q. And that's more about Maria making the best of a bad situation and Tim going home. Uh -huh. or, uh, and Tip going home. And then Ben, I don't know where this leaves Ben. That's what that's what about this. Because like Tim was his number one ally. He's gone. And so Ben is, he's kind of like a free agent. And sometimes it's a good spot to be. That, but right. what we've seen in the new era a lot of times is just, if you don't have one person fighting for you saying mm -hmm. i can't have this person go home i trust them maybe next vote or like just looking out because that group of five now no one is saying i'm gonna protect ben they'd all be like sure let's do an easy vote so it's like a double-edged sword a little bit because you're not threatening you don't have the numbers you don't have allies but there's just no one advocating for you to stay in the game so oh, i yeah. do fear for ben a little bit but maria on maria's side of things i think she's a good enough player to make this work for her and that, that's a great point that you said about Maria and, like, how dedicated she is to the Six. And, like, they may even want to keep doing the Six and maybe she brings in Charlie instead. Yeah, let's keep the know? number the same. Because Charlie's really? been doing really good in challenges and Q seems to be – Q thinks that he has a relationship with Charlie. Charlie doesn't want anything to do with Q. I'm sure we'll talk about that. But um, I could definitely see Maria being, like, we can have this – still be a yeah, thing and replace just, him with Charlie. Yeah. It's the plus he was plus never one he alliance. was never my ally in the first yeah. place like mm -hmm. i could totally see that happening in the episode where they're like sorry we had to get rid of tim and then she's like i didn't really like tim in the first place to be honest i like yeah. like i'm with charlie and then or you know you never know yeah so who do you have <laughs> at three jd this is where the first two are so easy and then it's yeah. just yeah. A, it's a shit I show <laughs> completely agree because any of these the the rest of these people could could be the bottom Mm -hmm. I actually, this may be controversial. I have Tevin. Okay. I have, I have Tevin. I, I know people are a little, you know, thrown off by him targeting Soda, who was clearly somebody who's really loyal to him. But the only person who seems like they want him out is just Venus, mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, we'll get to Venus eventually, but like Venus doesn't have any traction. I rewatched the episode today while I was at work and she brought up getting rid of Tevin to Maria and Maria was just like, no, like that. It wasn't even an option. So, and, and you can tell Maria feels really close with Tevin. She says that um, in the episode. So I don't see Maria targeting Tevin. I don't see Hunter targeting Tevin. I absolutely don't see Kenzie targeting Tevin. He's in the six. So Q's not targeting Tevin. Um, so it just, to me, it doesn't seem like Tevin is somebody who's likely to go home. I can see an absolute flip happening on the other hand though. And, and, them wanting an orange out and so i can i can see tevin going but not as likely in my opinion as everybody below him i so i know jd earlier in this podcast you took your dig at me of you know i agree with will phil your takes or i think you said like ice cold horrible something like that you just like really leaned in but verbatim verbatim yeah i think i think i got that quote exactly right um you just convinced me to move tevin up to three i was gonna i had tevin at five but no, no, but here's the truth. You can't I do was, that, Phil, you cheater. I, I can do whatever the hell I want. You guys um, always do that. <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I, know. I, we'll, I, we'll I rarely, I rarely change no, my rankings. I, with, I, with usually, this, I usually stick to my guns. And if I, got, I do I got change it, I will admit it. 
I've been I've been I've been traveling a lot this week, so I haven't thought as much about the inner workings of where does every single person stand after this yeah. split vote. And after the split vote is where it's a little bit tougher to figure out where everybody does stand. And I sit here and I see Soda went home. Tevin voted wrong, air quotes. Uh, after right. after thinking about it, he definitely knew what was going on. But if Soda does play the shot in the dark, he wants to make sure a vote goes elsewhere. So that makes sense. Um, Tevin, though, comes out of this with Hunter. He comes out of this. Liz doesn't care. Liz is happy this happened. Right. Venus, you're right, wants Tevin out. But there's <clears> nobody <throat> else in the game other than Venus who wants Tevin out of the game. So while it might look like he got rid of somebody who was very loyal to him, who might have been a great ally for him moving forward, it doesn't actually matter. Because now there's nobody. Tevin is not the name this week. It would take a lot for that to happen. So I hadn't really thought of it in that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm going to jump him from five up to three. Um, and hopefully, hopefully Will forgives me um, yeah. and, and continues doing the podcast. Also, oh. real quick, Q, Q in that secret scene, he was like, Tevin's getting to the end, but Tevin won't win. So, I mean. <laughs> they didn't I put think, it on I the, the regular show, win. so. I think you Tevin know. can win, but, but that just shows that he's doing a good job managing yeah. his threat level because everybody's like he's too out there he's he's too he's king tevin and i'm like i don't think a lot of people see him as king tevin besides venus so. venus mm -hmm. well yeah. yeah i think we've had the last three episodes we've had a sega go home and i know soda did also go home last week yeah but it went jam mariah tim and we have not spilled enough nami blood with this group and i think we're going to be looking at Nami and we're going to be looking at Yanu potentially um, if they realize, Hey, these three are just sliding through this game. So I feel better about the remaining Sega people than I do about anyone from an original Nami. So for that reason, I have Maria at number three. She is so well connected. And I think even with her little, you know, kind of tip with uh, Venus and, and all mm -hmm. that, they did vote together. And I think maybe right. they came together and put their differences aside and, and maybe Venus learned something or maybe Maria could, they actually have this like weird bond now or weird alliance. Cause once you vote yeah. with somebody, I think you probably know better than we do that. It does really make a, it really strengthens a bond, even if you do have yeah. these quarrels. So uh, she's got that going for her. Plus she's in the, the plus one Alliance, I think pretty well, especially like I said, she got to work with Tevin. She got to do this vote with Tevin. Tevin's yeah. clearly very close with Hunter. Hunter's close with Q and Tiff. So, Maria just seems to have connections everywhere. And then how does Maria, how, how does the vote turn on to Maria? Where, yeah, that's the, okay. Thing. You know what? We're going to get a C out uh -huh. again, because you know what? Sega was such a powerful tribe. And even though Tim and Jem and Mariah went home back to back to back, we still need to get word of one of them. You're not going for Maria. Right. So I, I just, I can't see a Maria going home this week. So I got her at number three and right. I'll leave it there for now. I won't, I won't jump ahead to four. Well, let me let me just say you have you have Maria at three. I have Maria at four, there and I, I I agree with everything that you just said about Maria. I do think that it is there's definitely a possibility that they they target Maria. You know, um, I I see them thinking of her as a big threat, and you know she doesn't have Tim anymore. And who is going to go to bat for Maria besides people who are not in the six? like Charlie and like Ben, who neither of them are in the six. Venus is not in the six and Venus just voted with her. The only person who could possibly, who I see possibly going to bat for her is maybe Tevin. And mm -hmm. I don't see Tevin going out of his way to make sure that she's safe. So, yeah, see, I, I, I feel like Tevin though, it's not that Tevin will go to bat for Maria. Mm. It's like, <clears throat> I just don't know. Like, I think we see her as more of a threat than the people on the island do. I feel like the audience is getting this very godmother role that she is like so in charge. I don't know if the other players see her that way. Yeah. Yeah, which I think works in her favor. And and I had I originally had her at four until JD convinced me to move Tevin up. So now I have Marie at five. So she's down <laughs> one spot. My four is actually Kenzie and I had her in spot three. And That's I know crazy. that that might be kind of a crazy take here, but I feel like with Kenzie... She had the moment with Ben. 
And she did win immunity, and Q's trying to throw that on her and all of that. And I know Will just said Nami and Yanu have not spilled enough blood. Tiffany is going to go to bat so hard for Kenzie if Kenzie's name comes up. I think Ben, being the vibe guy, is not going to want to get rid of Kenzie. I Agreed. think that Maria and Charlie will probably also agree to maybe it shouldn't be Kenzie, like because I do think that they're going to try to start working with Ben now. I think the Sega 3 are actually a little dangerous here. Hunter, I don't think that the biggest problem for Hunter right now is little Miss Kenzie with her bow in her hair. That's not what he's worried about. If you um, want to get rid of a Yanu, if you want to weaken those numbers, goodbye Q. That's just how I'm viewing it. Yeah. Kenzie would have to do yeah. so much wrong because the other thing is sometimes you say, oh, well, what if Q wins immunity? Well, if Q wins immunity, they're going to find somebody else. It's not Kenzie that needs to go in that situation. I think it would be a Nami who would go in that situation instead. So I think Kenzie's social game, they highlighted that a lot last week. She finally, you know, after a little bit of a rough go with the Banu stuff and everything, which I think was a little blown out of proportion, she was really highlighted as having a strong social game yeah. with the players around yeah. her and all that. They made sure that we knew that. And then the clip that did it for me is Tiffany and Kenzie talking about this is not Q's game. We need, we are okay. They are okay cutting Q. Mm -hmm. So if they start to catch wind that it could be one of them, they're going to say, what if we give you Q? You can take Q, have him. And I don't think Q is throwing challenges the way Q is saying he's throwing challenges. <laughs> I, so I, don't actually, I don't actually think he's a, I don't think he's much of a uh, immunity threat, which I think shields Kenzie for one more vote. So that's why I have her all up here. So I have her at four. I have Maria at five. Um, I think my top five are all safe. I really do. I think it's the next five where I start to be able to have legitimate reasons for all of them to go home. So I just want to say real quick, I said that's crazy. Not because you're crazy for that, Phil, but I, I have Kenzie right at five. So we have okay. the same top five. Wow. Um, okay. Wow. Exact same, I think. Actually, and you and you don't agree with me. Is that what you said? You said you not, don't you you agree with Will, not Phil. And then look at this. I just have better takes. I think power rankings make us like objectify our like ranking each week, which you could disagree with, but in terms of overall survivor opinions, JD. Phil, so. I will say I will say over the years of watching you, a lot of the finales, you've been really close. If if not, you've had all of them right in the finale. Hey, what was what was the 43 finale when I said if Jesse doesn't win this, Gabler gets the vote over <laughs> Cassidy and everybody was like, no, F you and it's like just go watch the video. And yeah, I have to I always like to throw this one out there, JD, because you said you're you know you're a big fan and just in case you haven't watched it. The season 32 jury roulette that I did with Will, I called, I think, I called almost every single player who voted for Michelle while he was over there just Stan and Aubrey like crazy. So <laughs> anyway, um, I'm, I'm glad we have the same top five, but what's your take on Kenzie here? Because Johnny Fairplay's take last week was, I think she's coming to one of his parties, so she's the winner of the season. So what do you have, JT? What's your reason? Um, I came into the season not wanting to be a fan of Kenzie. Not because of her personally. Um, she seems like the sweetest. Like, I would love for her to do my hair. Like, she seems really, <laughs> really nice. But whoever the internet stands, I just can't. And preseason, it was Kenzie. It was the Kenzie show. Um, so I, I loved watching last episode where she's being so vulnerable with, with Ben and so kind. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, where was that for Jess? And, mm -hmm. and Jelinski, like, she was kind of, I didn't love watching those episodes with, with her being like that. But, you know, we all do stuff on TV that we, that may not be indicative of who we really are. Um, Phil's still waiting fact, for that chance. But the I fact am. that, <laughs> the fact that she can literally be this vicious person to Jess and then be the most pure hearted person to Ben shows me that she can turn it on and off which just makes me think that she has the potential to win even more, to be honest. It, it, it gives me more confidence in her, if anything. Um, I also think she's very similar to D in the edit that she's getting. I agree uh, do with you guys, that. Do you guys there's remember? Some cut, there's some cutthroat to this, but right. she's also got a great social game that we're seeing. Right. So I do you guys that. remember um, last year in 45, like around the merge where everybody was like, D's running this game. D's going to win. D's this. I remember Jake was like, D I have to get rid of, get rid of this person because D's running the game. Um, I remember that at the tribal that Caleb went home. Um, but like we got all this content about 
Kenzie being a huge threat and like maybe possibly getting rid of Kenzie and Mermaid Dragon and Banu telling everybody that Kenzie's running the game and like that all would just like I was like, oh, this is leading to her downfall. Um, but now that it hasn't happened, I'm like, I think that may have been leading to a possible win. But I'm not yeah. going to take her as a winner pick because I'm not going to be the same as Johnny Fairplay. So. There you go. Hey, there you go. You got to take a stand somewhere, right? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, Will, who's your four and five? At number four, I have Liz. And wow. My queen. <laughs> yeah, so, so Phil last week had, I think you had Liz at four or five, and that was- I had Liz week. at two. Oh, you would you would listen two out of twelve people. There last was a week. zero percent chance Liz was going home last and, week, and I, and I spot thought that on. was pretty risky. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was pretty risky just for like the way that shook up, and that sometimes on these split votes, it's like, hey, let's just pick a person who we all feel comfortable about and deal with the bigger fish later. That sometimes happens. Mm-hmm. It's just like like Sifu goes home in forty five, where it's like there's no one really going to bat for Sifu, and Liz is kind of on right. an island. I mean, she literally is on an island, but um, True. right. I don't see how Liz goes home. Uh, I, I like. I've been saying. I think the the tides are turning against Yanu and Nami, and Liz certainly isn't a part of Nami. But when I say turning against Nami, I mean you still have Venus out here as an option, who's still stirring stuff up like crazy. That is going to be always. She her name is going to be on the block every episode until she gets voted out there will not an episode won't go by where it's like well we could just do the easy thing get venus this week like that's yeah. always going to be the case yeah um hunter big threat but he has the idol mm-hmm. tevin you guys put that in your top five i worry for tevin i think if there is a move a move made against nami it could certainly go against tevin now, i don't think i don't have my, all the way to the bottom yeah. i'm not gonna reveal, <laughs> reveal my whole rankings now but uh liz is to me why would you go after Liz right now? I think so many people mm-hmm. on that beach are looking at Liz as someone that I can go to the end with and beat. And you don't even have to have played that great of a game. Like you could be someone who just kind of didn't go to tribal that much, especially with the Yanu tribe going to tribal as much as they did. The people on Sega and Nami do not have a lot of votes to their name where they were able to really play the game. And so those people are looking for the Liz's and the Venuses. Mm-hmm. And I think Liz she's not doing what Venus is doing in stirring the pot. She is happy to sit back and just say, Hey, I just like being here. I just don't see how yeah. the target falls on the list. So I have her at four. Hey, and before then, you jump off, before okay. you jump off, because you did just talk about Liz a lot. So I just want to jump in here with Liz. Um, I agree with you on that with Liz, like Liz definitely 100% is, is somebody who will go along with the plan. She seems like she wants to play Sandra. She's not playing it as well as Sandra, but it seems like that's what she wants to do. I, think I need so. to say this. I need to say this real quick. She has 11 confessionals through seven episodes. JD had 11 in episode one, but she has 11 through seven episodes. <laughs> yeah. do you know who else had 11 confessionals through seven episodes? Natalie White. Erica, Erica from yeah, yeah Erica. Erica. So maybe Liz Cosmonaut. is getting set up as as the uh, the new uh, internet stan of underrated winners. But anyway, I just had to say that. Uh, Will, who do you got five? At five, I have Charlie. Okay. Uh, neither of you have mentioned him yet. It was so clear last week how well of a social game Charlie is playing because we heard yeah. from Soda, we heard from Tevin about how much they connected and they he's so comforting he's calm he's loyal i don't know why they felt that in the, the span of what like 48 hours like bare like this is the day after the mergatory vote i think or so maybe they've had two or three days whatever for him to ingratiate himself that well into another tribe that quickly super impressive Plus, he's got Maria, who's connected to the Plus One Alliance. Plus, we've lost Sega in back-to-back-to-back weeks. Mm-hmm. I don't think Sega is going to be the target here. I really don't. And if it is, it's going to be Ben. He does not have any protect- protection. I think Charlie is insulated enough with Maria that Maria can protect Charlie. And they want to work with Charlie. It seems like Tevin and... And Charlie agree, can easily yeah. get down. And like we talked about earlier, Charlie can easily replace him in this <laughs> alliance. And there you go. Charlie's safe. Yeah. I do have him lower than Maria because I think he is probably more outwardly a threat that people could be looking at. I think Maria is disguising her threat level really well. And that Maria is already in the plus one alliance where Charlie still needs to get that plus one invitation. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I do have him at five. That's good. 
Charlie was going to be my six. I hope I don't have the same as JD. I want to say before JD, but Charlie was going to be my six because he's going to be brought in. I think he's getting brought in. I think Ben is non-threatening. So Ben could be reasonably putting your top six of this power ranking. Um, I don't think just because Tim went home, now all of a sudden Ben's going to be the option. I think Ben yeah. is just like, uh, right now, somebody had posted earlier, Ben is a really great social player, but what game have the players actually seen? And I think that is the biggest question. And they haven't seen enough to think that he's a threat to get rid of. But, but I, can't I that agree be with threatening you. in its own way? way? I think Bro like, might hey, win. I don't really? Know. I think- that's yes. threatening to me. If I'm out there, it's like this guy is so charming. Everyone likes him, but he won't talk strategy with me. Because if you don't talk strategy with me, I don't instantly think, hey, you're not playing a strategic game. You're just not playing a strategic game with me. And even though it might actually be the case that he's not playing an overall strategic game, I don't think anyone out there is being like, yeah, Ben is one of the people I want to move forward with this game and that I can work with because he isn't playing strategically. But he is so damn likable that I do think it paints a little bit of a target on his back. So I don't mm-hmm. feel that great about Ben. But JD feels like Ben might win. So what Ben what's might win. And there's there's a lot of like intricate reasons why I think Ben can win. I mean it could happen. I, I'm not gonna talk about like where he's at in my rankings, but I just think that we it seems like what we're watching, I don't really see Ben doing that much. And yet, we see Ben so much and his perspective so much. Even though he's like not making some super strategic moves, he's really likable, but he's not like using his social capital to make things happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and yet, we keep getting Ben like people talking about. Oh, Ben's this huge threat, and Ben is this, and Ben is that. Even in the secret scene, he was like, "Ben is playing a Tony game," and I was like, "What? what? <laughs> in what world?" <laughs> But I feel like we're just seeing so much Ben and people love Ben that I think if Ben gets to the end and if he can go there uh, uh, with with Venus or with um, Liz, he can win. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I don't think Jeff from listening to Jeff, I don't feel like Jeff is that high on this season. So I'm thinking he might not be that high on the winner. And he doesn't like that Ben wins it without being like overly strategic right. in he's your like, face. I mean, yeah, like, he's I not high it, on 43. Hunter. He's not on high on co wrong. Like it makes sense. He's like, I wanted Hunter to win or Tiffany yeah. or something. He sits so, at I don't final know. three and guess, beats though. and beats Hunter and yeah. And <laughs> Tiffany and, and Jeff's like, I hate you all. I'm <gasps> done with it. 46 cast. You've now been blacklisted more than 43. We're moving on. Um, you know, I could see yeah. Jeff doing that. That's an interesting take. That's an interesting. So who do you have at six then? JD. At six, um, I have Liz. Okay. So, so I'm pretty. I think you had Will. You had Liz at five, right? Four. At but four. I have four. I have Liz right here. Um, I agree with with everything that you said. Um, I also think that I have two dark horses, and one of them is Liz. I do think that Liz can still win. I I believe that the viewers see her as a goat mm-hmm. because of the confessional count. And because of the, like, the confessionals that we are getting, like, what she's saying in them, um, the content of them. Um, but I don't think that the players are, are, are seeing her that way. I know they thought she was a bit kooky at the beginning just because she, um, she like, talks about, you know, how much money she's got. Mm-hmm. But she seems like she's playing a good game. And I love the move at Last Tribal Council, the bluff of, like, I didn't bring my bag. I'm Nami Strong. You know, and she's convincing that to both Venus and Soda. The soda, yeah, and to Jeff, yeah. Because either way you you slice it, she wasn't Nami strong, even if she voted for Venus, even if she voted for Soda. So, um, also she's looking, she's looking jungle hot out there. You know, all the mm-hmm. all the guys want a piece piece of live. Piece of live. That's what she, she says, she's man. She's rich, and I and I and I believe her. You know, she's yeah. laying on the beach. I was like, I was like, okay, Liz, I see you. You know. Liz, um, so I got Liz, I got Liz, I got JD's number tonight, Liz. You know, <laughs> you know, call me up. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, but, but uh, she's my, she is one. I have two dark horses, and she's one of them. So okay. Yeah. Well, who's your six? At six, I have Kenzie, who you both had very high, and I, I do cool. think Kenzie's in a reasonably good position. But there is a chance if the tides turn against Yanu here, and we all think Q is probably none of us have even mentioned Q yet in our ranking, so we all don't like Q's chances this week. I could see it turning against Kenzie because what, what do we 
We got I just Liz wanted to throw this up for people watching. That's all. Good. Yeah. Well, you can finish your thought, then we'll get to yeah, it. Yeah, but then it pops up. I have to read it while I'm speaking. All right, well, Sarah kind of... says Liz should sponsor the special set, the specialist with Jesus, her big though. stacks of cash. I know, sorry. <laughs> I mean, Liz should sponsor the specialist with her big stacks of cash. So, yeah. Liz, sponsor here, me, Liz. Liz. Sponsor yeah. me. Yeah. Sponsor JD. You got a <laughs> lot of opportunities here, Liz. Um, sorry, Will. Go ahead. So, Kenzie, Kenzie, Kenzie. Yeah. Um, I know you You both said Tiffany will kind of put, put this Kenzie voting idea to bed very quickly. Mm -hmm. But Kenzie's just – or sorry, Tiffany is just one of five people in this alliance, and hey, maybe one of six if Charlie's brought in. And yeah. if we know Q is kind of on to Kenzie a little bit, we saw that <clears throat> we've seen the seed of that planted on Yanu when Q was doing this whole pretend quit thing, like they lost another challenge. He was going to be like, pretending. "Hey, just vote me, just vote me out," um, and and that will prevent Kenzie from playing her shot in the dark and the blind. So, so Q. We know is closer to Tip than he is to Kenzie, and Q is very close to Tevin and Hunter. And Tevin now just worked with Maria, and, and Maria is a part of this. So, if that group decides, hey, you know, it's time for a Yanu to go, there's only one Yanu not a part of that six, and that's Kenzie. And Tiff might have to bite the bullet and feel kind of how you said Tiff is only going to play that idol for herself, not going to play it for Kenzie, not going to play it for Q. She's mm -hmm. She's a selfish player. I mean, you have to be in the new era and you have to be when the game moves this quickly. Voting out Kenzie is another round you're surviving in, and then it reduces your numbers as a Yanu tribe. Now there's only two of us left, and you're the first tribe to get down to two, and now you've kind of taken this Tika 3 mentality out of you yeah. and that you've already now lost a member in the merge. So, so I know Tip loves Kenzie, but she, at some point, if Tiffany is going to win this game, which I think there is a chance, I wouldn't say she's the front runner. She's going to have to cut ties with Kenzie. Kenzie is an absolute threat to win. I think Tip knows Kenzie this. Kenzie will yeah, beat absolutely. Tip. And I think Tip knows that keeping Q is actually probably better because Q is a more, you know, front-facing, obvious threat, both physically and strategically, how he dominates these conversations. So if it does turn to Kenzie, I think Tip can easily say, you know what, Kenzie, I got to – it's going to be tough. I got to let Kenzie go. And guess what? Now – Tip is there with Q, big threat. Yanu only has two people left, and she's sitting in a beautiful spot with an idol at final nine. And that position for Tip, though she loses one of her best allies, is a very agreeable position for Tip. So I do have Kenzie lower than you because there is a chance that could happen. Again, this is still at I six completely out of ten. Agree. So, and and I go. can see Q's first confessional of the next episode being like, "Yeah, I hopped up, I hopped up, Kenzie," you know. <laughs> At the tribal council, so that way everybody sees. Everybody knows she's a threat. Yeah, like, like exactly. Q being like that was on purpose, and, and which I actually, actually think was a good move by that, Q. Right, I say. agree. I mean, that was actually yeah. probably the it best movie great. made all episode. You yeah. have been, yeah. you've been there. You have Hunter there. That just planting that little seed of damn Kenzie's awesome. Yeah. You know, she Phil, had an emotional speech to Jeff. So. I do think Kenny uh, Kenzie still does have winner upside. I still I think do think he's about the shit on me. Well, so yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I love this. Phil, I'll shut yeah, up. Then. I, was, I was gonna say I don't think I don't think Kenzie's beating Tiff in the final. Really, you don't think so? I, I think, think Kenzie I think, would beat her. I think Tiffany would get Q's vote for sure, and she would get Nami for sure. Uh, that's a good point. I'll, I would. I, it, we have to see how the rest Venus. of the game plays out. They would be close. They would be Austin mm -hmm. D close though. I they would be that. they would be Dom Wendell close. I think. Yeah. Because I think Kenzie gets the Seagas. For sure. I yeah, think she's she definitely getting Ben, Maria, Steve Charlie is. if they're not sitting there. Right, yeah. right. But, but be close. I think, I and think, I think, I think because, Tip could get those. Because yeah. they know it's close, one of them has to eventually turn on the other. A little Ricard yeah. and Chan action going on, potentially. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Who do you have at seven, JD? Uh, seven, I have Charlie. Um, and Charlie is another person, much like Kenzie, that I came into the season. And first of all, this is not as people. I think everybody who goes on Survivor is probably an amazing person. And I would love to meet them because they're super awesome. But I really did not want to like Charlie because I am the opposite of a Swifty. I can't stand Swifties. Oh, they no, are, Jay. Don't do that to me. Jay. They are. Will, they are uh, Will's the Swifty. Swifty, Swifties are top, top three worst fandoms next to, like, Survivor watchers survivor watchers <laughs> and you've survivor experienced fans are so two of my oh, favorite sure. things what's Damn. your third one what, is it just people named will fans of people named or is it, will, no, fans one? of the show lost 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fans of the show lost. They're terrible. I mean, honestly, those fans are pretty bad, but let's be But right. those would be the, I mean, that's the three, right? Those are like my three things. JD, who's your band? Since you are, I think you're the youngest one we've actually had on the podcast. Who would be the band that you would beat the Charlie game? You would try to beat Charlie with? Who could do a hundred songs of? Um, actually, I don't know if anybody sees my Spotify wrapped on, on Instagram, but um, I listen to a lot of Nat King Cole. Uh, okay. I love Nat King Cole. Uh, I listen that's to a, lot a of big Michael discography. Yeah. Oh, and if you... Don't be a Swifty. All you Swifties, I, just start listening to Lafay, and I swear your life will change for the better. <laughs> Lafay's better. I said it. Sorry, it was so good. I'm not really in the Swifty community or fandom. I just like listen to the songs. I don't really they're follow. So, they're so toxic. No, I yeah you yeah. Should, I don't again. I don't know. I, it's like wrong. it's kind of what kind of a little bit what I do with Survivor. I don't go on Survivor Twitter or Survivor Reddit that much. I just like watch the yeah. show and enjoy it. And then I obviously have a podcast and there's a chat, but like. I don't know the greater opinions going on. The same thing with Taylor Swift music. It's like, I just like, I like the tunes, man. It's good tunes. Yeah. So. But back to Charlie, back to Charlie. Yes. I, what my initial point was like, I didn't want to like Charlie and I love Charlie. I think Charlie's playing such a terrific game. I think he's hilarious. I don't know where this notion that he's not a good character is coming from. Johnny Fair play. Uh, like, yeah, that's, that's a been cold great. Well, when I, he, I was sitting like, next to him and he had a machete. Yeah. When, when he, he trolled like, Q and he just goes, <laughs> I got this. Baltimore. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> when he's like got the shit eating grin and he's just like like right before the cut, it's just so funny. Um he's really witty. Um he's playing a great social game. I even think he's won over Venus after Venus targeted him yeah. initially. I really think that he has a much better relationship with Venus now. Um and it seems like he's doing a great job, you know, with Tevin. Um, he's still got Maria. He's still got Ben. All of the people who he truly, it's truly seemed like he was close to, he still has in the game. And I think he's doing an incredible job physically, strategically, um, socially. I just think he's not in the six. Yeah. He can be. Not it's yet. a possibility. Yeah, not yet. But he's not there. Yeah. And also, it. I think at some point he's going to target Q. And if Q finds out that he's targeting him, it's a warpath because it doesn't take a lot for Q to realize that somebody needs to go home. You could sneeze wrong and Q will be like, you're going next. So, yeah, yeah, that's where I've Charlie at 10. He's doing great. Okay. I like it. Um, I have, okay. I have Ben at seven. So I guess I'm the first one to say Ben's name, but I have Ben at seven. And I think the thing is right now, Ben's in a tricky spot because he has nobody who's defending him. Who's if his name comes up, Charlie and Maria might say, "Let's keep Ben around. We don't want to have him go." Or they might say, "But well, that's three... dangerous for their game." Wait, hang on, I'm we... not done. I know I'm they have saying. three Segas. They have three Segas <laughs> here. No, no, no. I'm agreeing with you, Will. But that's why I want to make this point here. Of there's three Segas in a row now, as Will said, went home. Even though Soda ends up going home there, it was like three ways in a row, or three whatever, three cycles in a row where a Sega goes home. I think Maria and Charlie would defend Ben more here because of the Sega thing and saying, guys, you all want to keep these numbers even. If we lose a Sega tonight, now it's 4-3-2. It should be a Nami. That's the only way to defend him. But they're, they're, he's in a dangerous position where, as Will said earlier, he is a really good, fun guy to keep around, which makes him mm -hmm. very dangerous at the end. So you might say, well, if you want to get rid of Ben, then get rid of Ben. But I think they're too worried about the numbers right now. But that's why I've been at seven and I don't have him higher is because there's nobody who's going to stick their neck out on the line just for Ben. Maria and Charlie will be doing it for the benefit of themselves and Sega and claiming the Sega numbers need to be even, not because they're saying we need Ben if we want to get to the final three. As Will said earlier, you probably want to get rid of Ben before right. you get to the final three because he might just be <clears throat> the Fabio type who says, you guys like me, right? So vote for me to win. Yeah, yeah. and look, look at this. Is, sorry to interrupt you, but it was like right when you said that, it was just so like, yeah, Charlie and Maria can stick their necks out for Ben. But how did that work out for Sega the last time? That's uh, true. When, when Tim tried to stick his neck out for Ben, Tim yep. got voted off. Tim's gone. I mean, it, it, another point here, it's like you have three left. Aren't you way less threatening if there's only two of you left like if, if charlie and maria are like hey, it's going ben's way that actually probably might be better for our game because now no one's looking at sega at all um so i just yeah i i, I don't see ben being defended should i go with seven here am i am i up yeah why don't you do your seven and then and then we'll have uh 
Yeah, then we'll I'll do our eights and then we'll do nine and ten together. And JD, you're going last on nine and ten. You always have to give your take last. Yeah, so cool. cool. Save the best for last, of course. Yeah. Um, I got <laughs> I got Tevin at seven mainly just because it rhymes. So, um, <laughs> that's that's. Did you I even realize that before you just said it there live? That felt like a that felt like a very like knee jerk reaction of I just no it rhymes. It sounded cool, so that's why it's there. No, um, like I've been I'm saying, so, eleven. Jay, <laughs> So you really went home last week. Home. Yeah. Yeah. He's already gone. <laughs> Things could turn against Nami, man. That's that's kind of just where I'm at. I've been saying it all podcast. I get that. And and if if the Yanu and C can somehow get together and, and this plus one alliance now falls apart. I mean, we haven't really mentioned the fact it already has eliminated one of its own members. Tim's already gone. So then they get back together, these two groups of five. Are they really gonna be like, yay? Six strong, except for Tim, that you guys voted out, even though we're all together in the alliance. So now we're gonna continue with this alliance that's five, and maybe we'll add one person. What if it just, just dissipates? Mm-hmm. What if the what if it's no more? And then where does Tevin have to go? And then you look at Nami and say they have four people left and say, Hey, who's the who's the king? Who's King Tevin or who's running the show there? Is it Hunter? Not really. Hunter's playing, you know, he's working hard at camp, he's good at challenges. Who's actually the threat on Nami? That's Tevin. So I don't think he's as much of a risk as some of the, the, the three people I have remaining, but Tevin at seven. I like it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I totally um, get that. That reasoning. It checks out. It does. It does make sense why you put him a little bit lower. And that's why I had him kind of at five. <clears throat> you're right in the middle, and then JD convinced me. But my number yeah, eight is hard. just Liz. Sorry, I just wanted to – Liz is my eight. She's my eight. I don't have much to say about her. She hasn't but She went from two time. to eight. For you, well, last like week the split tribal is so much more threatening. No, she had no. I knew that she was never going to be the name. Here's why I have her at eight this week. If they want to get rid of a Nami, but they all say Venus should like could win. Like she, we want to sit next to her final three. Venus isn't beating us. But couldn't you say the same thing about Liz? Well, if but I think. Reason? I, I think like JD said, I think there's a little bit more to Liz where Liz hasn't been as abrasive as Venus. Venus is really mm-hmm. rubbing everybody on this island the wrong way. I don't think Liz is. I think Liz talking about the money and stuff is throwing people off and they don't understand her strategy or her game. But exactly. But they don't hate her for that. Whereas I think some of the people on this island cannot stand Venus. And based on the Twitter mm-hmm. interactions and stuff, I think it might still be going. We'll so, talk about that. Yeah. So for me... <laughs> I put Liz down here at eight because at the split tribal, you never are pointing at Liz, but with how the numbers line up right now, Liz is an easy boot. And that's where I'm looking at this right now. My bottom three people are three people that if any of them go home this week, it would be a unanimous vote. I think that they could get every single person, all nine of the other players on the Island to vote for either Liz, either Venus or Q. And I'll talk about where I have Venus and Q in a little bit, but I think you could get all nine people to vote for them because there's nobody who is going to w- who's willing to risk their game for that. And that's why I have Liz at eight uh, behind Ben, behind Tevin, behind all of them. Tevin does have Hunter and Hunter does have good relationships. And that's what I think protects Hunter over somebody like Liz, who nobody is going to stick their neck out for Liz. If somebody starts saying Liz, 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 and then it's just a pile on vote and there's nothing she can do to stop the train. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So that's why that's I dropped the first, it from two that's the first time I disagree. Well, I, that's the first time I disagree. Well, I think I think Tevin wouldn't let that happen. Honestly, I think Tevin knows. I know he just got rid of Soda, but I think Tevin knows that he's beaten Liz. I mean, that was his mm-hmm. first confessional. I think was was Liz talking about how she made money, and he was like, he was like, "You're you're not here for money." He's like, "I am." Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I think there's something there between those two, and I don't see him just giving up another one of his numbers yeah that if, easily if it goes against nami it's like hey we'll give you venus like i like mm-hmm. liz and him clearly work together so yeah yeah oh and who do i have crazy. below liz i definitely have venus below okay. liz so yeah, i do think okay. it's going that way and venus i don't see winning an immunity but will why don't you do uh why don't you do your eight i might just wrap it out here because it's kind of all part of one story and conversation okay. so i have q at 10 so i'm starting with that i think q is in a really tough spot. I think he has really overplayed to the point where his own Alliance members are like, hey, we got to get Q out. If Tiffany and Kenzie can get Q out, they're in a great spot. They get rid of the guy who's controlling their game. Their Yanni numbers go down to two, as I've repeated like a thousand times on this podcast. So that Mm -hmm. it works for them. 
Uh, I think Maria Charlie can get on board, especially because maybe Maria is cut off from the plus one alliance now that Tim is gone. Yeah. So yeah. there's enough <clears throat> working against Q, but Q could very well win immunity, and that's kind of how I'm basing this. I think Q is going to be the target. Q mm -hmm. wins immunity, or you know, hey, if he doesn't win immunity, I got him at ten. He goes home. If he wins, I think it's then between Ben and Venus as two people that are like expendable and no one's really looking out for. And I think Ben has just that upper hand on relationships in Venus. It's like, all right, time for Venus to go. Cause I mean, she could have gone at the, the merge Troy boot. She could have gone last week when Soda, Soda went home. So she's just like hanging on for dear life. And I do think there is merit to keeping Venus in the game, but at some point, if your main target wins immunity, you have to fall back onto somebody that isn't you. Make sure it's not me. So, I, hey, if I want to get Q out and he goes, like, am I really going to get enough numbers to push it on to Tiffany or Kenzie just because I wanted a Yanni? That's probably pretty tricky to do. But can yeah. I get enough votes on to Venus that everyone seems to be irritated with? Great. I might not have yeah. a go to Final Three, but at least I stay alive in the game. So I think the group can kind of, like, get together. So um, I got Ben at eight, Venus at nine. Cute. Yeah. So I'll I'll kill mine then, JD, and then you can do your 8, 9, and 10 because I have the same cool. as Will. I have Venus at 9. I have Q at 10. And and like I said, I my bottom three was solely based on I could see a 9-1 vote. And I think, JD, you're right. I think that Tevin likely won't let Liz get the votes on her, and then maybe that gets Hunter involved and whatever. Venus, every single person on the island is okay with voting out Venus. But the reason why I have Q below Venus is because Venus can do something – I'm sorry, Q can do something to make himself look better at Final Tribal, and that is win immunities. Yes, right now we're all kind of laughing at him while he's saying, oh, yeah, I threw that one, I threw that one. Okay, but you've lost every time, Q. So we're all kind of laughing at that. But if he goes on an immunity run and he's making right reads, that could get him enough votes. That could get him four votes at Final Tribal, and that might be all he needs to win. He could win 4-3-1. So that's what scares me with Q and why I think they'll want to get him out more. But if – they all are just saying we need an easy vote after this double boot. It is Venus. I mean, mm -hmm. and Venus, though, I think a lot of people want to take to the final three with them with how she is currently playing the game and how she's being perceived by the rest of her tribe. But you can't be – if you don't get to final three, why does it matter who sits at final three? So you can say I want Venus to sit next to me at final three, but if keeping Venus around ultimately is what sends you home – you have to so at some point, point worry yeah. about yourself more. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so I have Venus at, at nine and Q at 10. JD, you're on eight. You can you can kill yours here. So what do you got? Okay. Um, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, I'm going to go Q, then Ben, then Venus. Okay. Um, Q is my other Dark Horse winner. Wow. Q is. Um, I think if Q, Q could probably go home here. He, he might be the one who goes home here. That is very likely. Um, there's so many confessionals and so many reasons why people should get rid of Q here. Um, but I don't think Hunter would want him to go yet, to be honest. And I don't think that um, Tevin would want him to go yet. Uh, but he, what, what really it comes down to is the girls. Do the girls want to get rid of him right now? Because they could absolutely get Venus... Um, and I definitely can see Kenzie working Ben for that. And Ben can pull in Charlie and Maria. And once again, Charlie and Maria are in the middle of whether or not they want to get rid of Q or they want to get rid of who knows who Q's going to target. It might be Tiffany from the preview, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we don't know. Um, but if Q survives, I, I do think that Q is a dark horse to win. He's so, he's such an enigma. And, and here, he had that confessional in those first four episodes where he's talking to Banu. And Banu's like, I'm a wackadoodle. And he's mm -hmm. like, wackadoodles win. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody thought that that confessional was talking about Banu. And everybody's like, Banu's going to the end. But I think maybe that confessional was either talking about Q himself as the wackadoodle who wins season 46. Or Ben. Ben, yeah. Or Liz. Mm -hmm. And also... What a winner quote that would be, not by the winner, but about the winner, if Wackadoodles win, win. was our big hint that right? Ben, Liz, or Q was going to win the game. Right? <laughs> that would right? be sneaky. That would be That'd very be sneaky. I'm yeah. also thinking about this secret scene. Like, we, we rarely see scenes where you just have one player just listing off their reads of everybody. Mm -hmm. And, like, why? I think people have a, um, 
this view of secret scenes is like, oh, they're always this type of scene, always this type of way, and they make them this yeah. way. I don't think they produce the secret scenes knowing that they're going to become secret scenes. I think it yeah. is fat that is trimmed from the episodes. At the right. that, second. These yeah. are scenes that, I, I mean, because a lot of times they, they, I mean, they are edited. There's music behind them. Like they, a lot of times they're not colorized. So they don't hit the final checks to make it to the episode, mm -hmm. but they are, you know, thought about as being a potential scene to be in the episode. It's not just for YouTube. They don't, they don't even get that many views and they're actually really hard to find sometimes. So it's mm -hmm. like, they don't do it for the extra bonus content. They do it because it was going to be in the episode. And so that from Q, I don't know if it was just like interesting or why that even was a scene, but it was like, is he like Dark Horse big time? Because I think there's a lot of mistakes that we're seeing from Q, a lot of flaws in his game, but it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. It really right? wouldn't be. And another thing is, I know, I know I get a little too meta sometimes in talking about like how everybody thinks outside the game, like Jeff and stuff like that. But I found it so weird that Q is doing all of these things, like talking about quitting. And honestly, I believe Jelinski when Jelinski said that Q wanted to not do that challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I feel like we're being protected from that. And like Q was talking about quitting and I feel like Jeff would be super pissed off about anybody even bringing up leaving the game at all. And I, I was listening to Jeff's podcast and he just like writes it off and he thinks like Q is hilarious. And like, like, I just don't understand. I'm like, Oh, maybe Jeff likes Q. So Q has to do something. Right. So that's, a, that's another reason why I think maybe he's a dark horse. That might be a long shot. Um, but I also think Q has more game than we give him credit. I mm -hmm. think he's playing a little too hard. And I honestly, I don't think he fully understands the game 100%. Um, especially when he's like, I don't understand how Yam Yam won in mm -hmm. the preseason. I was like, this dude's not winning. But I, I came <laughs> around on him a little bit. Um, I think he's got game. I think he's got a better social game than we give him credit. He had Jess and he had Banu um, and he even had Jelinski. Like he, he has a good social game. I just think he's, and people don't say that he's abrasive like Venus, but he is yeah. playing too hard. Still. But people like you for sure. They like well, working with you. He seems like a good guy that people are like very comfortable working with. It just, he can be a little bit, he can dictate the vote on his own too many times. I think that's JD. That's I know, I know you were, flaw. you were chomping at the bit in the chat last week. Is Q the fan favorite of this season? Absolutely not. Okay. Will's been Will's been fighting hard for this. No, I, this I, was, I, I you like, asked I like me that. You, Bill but... will do this too, where it's like, no, I asked the fan JD, favorite. JD, you listen to this. No, you, you asked the fan favorite and after episode this. six. And then we go last week, and Q has like a really bad episode. And you're like, hey, Will, who's the fan favorite? It's going to be Hunter. It's, it's, you said Q. It's like, dude, we just saw another 90 minutes of the show. And up to the point when you had asked me, Hunter was not a visible character enough. He had been to one merged tribal council. That can't be the fan favorite yet. And Q had right. been the fan favorite of the pre-merge, absolutely. So don't move the goalposts on me over here. JD, do you and think Q say, is the fan say, favorite of the pre-merge? I will say everything that you said, Phil, made sense about Q not being the MVP. But you also, Will, you said that there are people who aren't on social media. Oh, who yeah, aren't that's on who we're Instagram, talking about. Who yeah. aren't on Facebook. Who aren't on who aren't Facebook on Reddit, or Reddit, right? They're just watching at home. Like, those people may see Q as the fan favorite, and, yeah. and I can absolutely see that. Like, Phil even agreed with me. He's like, yeah, my dad is going to call me tomorrow and say, oh, Q's winning this game. I love Q. That doesn't mean he's the yeah. fan favorite. That just means yeah. my dad can't read who a winner is. Um, it's, but no, actually, actually, that's not part of watching the show. That's just, like, weird 1% of fans do this. Like, this is not the... I don't think from the general from the general population, and I got to I got to run like a little test, and we'll be like, "That's not enough people." Plus, these are I literally had never met these people in my life. But it's not enough people. Plus, <laughs> yeah, I got to I got to talk to like people for some reason. So I was at my my wife's reunion this weekend, and so I got to talk to more people. And she would always say, "Oh, he does this like the Survivor podcast." She'd bring it up because that like I don't know. I think she thinks it's cool, so that's good. It is cool. Um, but anyway, so people would start saying that they it's they watch cool. Survivor. <laughs> they would say that they watch Survivor. And I would ask them who was their favorite of the season. And they would say, oh, I'm not really sure. And I would say, is Q your favorite? And they would say, no, definitely not. And well, after this episode, and it was you like had the worst episode people. of the season. But, but Will, the thing was, you can say that it was just this episode that just totally screwed him. Yeah, I think the downfall had the been there for sure. I think the way the saying, Banu interaction. The way you're asking this happen. question now, now you're asking people who their fan favorite is. And then you ask them, is it Q? So you're doing this like the terrible way to. 
way to survey people. Jesse would be very upset with you here. You don't no, no, say, no. You asked them the question first, it. and then when they can't think of it, I was just like, well, is it Q? And they always can confidently right. say no, because, it's not No, because Q. they He's weren't think thought. that's not who they're thinking of. Especially you were asking them after. JD's just episode, smiling. So, so this is, this is well, just bad. This is bad survey work. I'm telling you, well, of, the, of the first five episodes of the show, Q was one of the fan favorites, if not number Yeah. Will, one I love you, but I will say uh, that for me, the the had a bad episode thing, it doesn't hold a lot of water for me. Just because Venus has had bad episode after bad episode after bad episode after bad episode, and she is far and away the fan favorite of this season. And it's <laughs> well, I think I, that's like the internet's brain, fan favorite. Though. That's like the internet's fan favorite. Though. Why I don't do you think, think that I, is JD? Why? Oh, sorry, to, to like I guess make this a little bit more serious. Why do you think it is that Venus is so beloved right now by the internet? I think the. Well, I'll I'll get to Venus as a player because I actually think she's underrated. Um, but I think that it's just been in the new era. It's been such a long time since we've had um, somebody cast who feels like they were supposed to be on season 25. Like she's so similar to Abby Maria Gomez, you know, mm -hmm. and she's I mean, she's obviously a lot of people stand her she because she's very attractive. Um, she's true to herself, which people love the authenticity. A lot of people love the authenticity of, of Russell, how Russell is unapologetically Russell and Venus is unapologetically Venus. And people will say that they hate Kumbaya Survivor and Venus is anything but. Her Twitter shenanigans are awful, in my opinion. And, you know, I, I, I'll say my piece about that, but it, yeah. I think people just love her. They And they love, you know, the internet loves to stand you know, the people who are a little bit polarizing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have Jay Bird Aquatic here in chat and says, because Venus is gorgeous and entertaining and a villain. Yeah. There's not enough villains on the show. So I don't know I think if you guys have. Like she's giving villain energy and there's just not enough of that amount of time. So I think that really is why so many people can grab to be like, finally, we're getting this like flavor of character that we just haven't had in such a long time. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys have watched uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. I have uh, not. But 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 she gives Azula for all of you fans of Avatar and Survivor. She she's so Azula, and you know I I get it, I get it, bro. Trust me, we all love Azula and Heather from Total Drama Island. Like it's just it's natural. So so all right. So you have so you talked about Q. You talked about Ben. Did you want to say anything else on Venus here? Then I didn't really talk about Ben, chance? but I talked about Ben like at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. So I don't really have anything else on Ben. I think Ben can win. Ben is. Uh, he, I have two winner picks and then two Dark Horse winner picks, and he's one of my winner picks. I already said we've gotten so Let's much. Let's get ben your content. one winner pick. Who's you have to you have to pick one person. If I if it was if I was betting on my life, I would say Kenzie. Okay, all right. But I can't agree with fair play, so I'll say Maria. Okay, there you go. So you're betting on your life, but it's more worth it to to lose your life than to agree with Johnny <laughs> Fairplay. I like yes. that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But okay, so so okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Maria, you heard it here. You're you're officially JD's winner pick. She's played great. She's played she so great. So yeah. yeah. Now give your give your final piece here on on uh, Venus and then let's 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 wrap this <sighs> thing up. Let's go. Venus. Venus is probably the most frustrating player I've watched in a long time. She's probably the most frustrating player I've seen since me. For myself. I'm <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. She's the most frustrating player for me to watch since I watched myself. And that's because Venus has freaking meta vision, bro. Mm -hmm. She is so underratedly brilliant in this game. She has the mind. I would say she has the best strategic read in the entire game out of everybody who's who's there. She is brilliant. She has always been able to snuff out who the target needs to be back to back to back to back. At every point, she can read whether or not somebody's vibing with her. She can read who's in the power position, who the optimal person is to go. And I think if a lot of people, including myself, had even a modicum of that ability, we would have been able to do way better in this game. I think if Brad had that, he would have been able to snuff out Shan a long time ago. I think that um, people would have been able to get rid of D a lot long before they could have. So I really think that Venus is so underrated in that regard. For those of you who watch Fallout or the new the new show on Amazon, I gotta or, watch it. No spoilers, no spoilers. Or or have it. played Fallout Four, you know the special. She has a 10 in perception. 
She has an absolute 10 in perception. She has a nine in intelligence. And she has a one in charisma. <laughs> Venus That's has Venus no culture. she has yeah. she has no social tact at all. No riz. She has everything that you could need in terms of your strategic game and has no social ability. Mm-hmm. She like every single charisma check, every single time she has a chance to move someone to her ideas or get someone on her side, she fails. Mm-hmm. Because she doesn't know how to talk to people. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but like just from watching what's going on on screen like she's so aggressive and off-putting and it's really a shame because she's so smart and she she can play the game but the social game is the most important aspect and she has a zero like mm-hmm. and i don't understand why like she can she not fake it can she not like fake being nice or or like i don't I don't like she I don't know if she realizes she needs to to win the game. I think that might be what it is. And I watched I watched Caleb talk to Rob Cesternino about Venus and how Caleb thought that she was very similar to Emily. And I just don't see it because when Caleb came to Emily about like changing and why it is that people are not um feeling comfortable having these strategic and social conversations with her, Emily was very receptive. Very, mm-hmm. very receptive. And Venus had that same opportunity when she talks to um, Maria, and she's not receptive at all. She's like, oh, it's all it's all Maria's fault. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like when you talk to those people who, who, like, are absolutely in the wrong, and for some reason they're just convinced that they can do no wrong. And I think yeah. that's Venus. I think she blames everybody um, for her situation but herself. Um, and this is nothing to like attack her as a person because she's probably amazing. Everybody seems to love her. Um, Venus Stance, please don't come for me. Please. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, you've been called the Stan, the, the leader of the Venus Stan army. So you're okay. So go ahead. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I do not stand Venus. <laughs> I just really think that she, there are people who overestimate her, who stand her to the end of time. And she just is not that good. But then there's there people was the who are Twitter- like, she has no game. And I'm like, well, that's not necessarily true either. There was the one on X going around this week of she put Maria in her place and it had like 700 <laughs> retweets and like 5,000 likes. And I was like, I was like, man, people will just see anything they want to pretend they're yeah, seeing. And, and that, that isn't that part of the whole internet standing of some of these players? Just like clean, oh, no. like, yes, get it. And just like, I like them because of the mess. But I think they don't like, realize yeah. that they're like, I think like there are people who are retweeting that and doing that who truly believe that Venus put Maria in her Absol- place. Absolutely. There's that's people the thing. Who, it's not who believe Venus orchestrated Soda's blindside. Yeah. Yeah. When she like barely even knew about it because Charlie was like, I don't know. I might just play my shot in the dark. I don't know. You know, and Maria didn't even want to talk to her. Tevin was the first person to bring it up. And guys, Tevin only voted for Soda just in case a stray mm-hmm. vote after a shot in the dark play yeah. or, an, or an advantage. So and maybe defense. even a little bit to save face, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I don't get why people are saying that was Venus's move when that was not Venus's yeah, move. Yeah, it was not. Oh. Because the, the internet just loves yeah. her. But there you go. They That's love great. her. She's she's a sweetheart. Now to her Twitter, to her Twitter rants, I I have a, I just have to say this. I have such a deep issue when my generation, specifically Gen Z, when we're so quick to label things as like misogynistic or racist or xenophobic or anti-Semitic. Like we we do that so fast and it really desensitizes the word. Because and it takes away from people who've actually experienced it, like people who have 100 percent already experienced, you know, the misogyny in the real world or experienced the racism in the real world. You can't say something is racist or misogynistic just because something happened that you don't necessarily like, you know, and there is 110 percent been misogyny on Survivor. Drew Christie, John Rocker, mm-hmm. Dan Spilo, uh, all of Survivor Thailand. Uh, ben and Russell from Samoa. Like, it, mm-hmm. it happens all the time. But I, I think that she should just be really careful with saying stuff like that, especially with her castmates. Um, and, like, people are quick to go to Charlie and be not nice to Charlie in, in his comment sections and stuff and do the same thing with Tevin and Soda. And then I'm, I don't really understand why she's surprised when people are doing that. And she's like, guys, yeah. stop being mean to them, even though I kind of alluded to them be- needing to be Use the word misogyny that's going to get people to be pretty shitty to other people. So yeah. I agree with you on that for sure. Uh, don't come for me, guys. Don't come for me. Yeah. Just my opinion. Yeah. I just think you have to be careful with that type of thing. 
Yeah. No, I totally agree. And we're too and, casual. We're too casual with those words nowadays. They, and they're starting to lose their meaning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I totally yeah, agree. So. I totally agree. There you go. She's there, good. You, she's there you go, Venus stands. <laughs> I'm not um, a Venus stan. <laughs> well, JD, it was a pleasure, man. I'm glad no, we finally were able fun. to make this happen. I'm glad yeah. we were able to get it done. And um, yeah. Season we'll 41. Go rewatch it, everybody. Go check it out. It's not as bad as you think now that you've seen the new era. It's yeah. not. It's not. If you there just you pay go. attention to like this year, then it's pretty good. Then it's good. There you go. It's you good. Like, it's like two or three characters. Um, but anyway, <laughs> everybody, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Will and I we're we're putting out all these connections with Blake too. Survivor connections. We just released our newest yeah, one. Check today. out the Survivor connections. JD, I think would be very good because he uh, he's a, a trivia. Yeah, he Rob. He be Rob. There you go. There you go. I love you, Rob. And uh, we'll be back on Wednesday night with our Survivor recap. Make sure to check out the channel for all the other stuff we're doing. But otherwise, we'll see you then. Bye, everybody. See ya.